<laughs> Our ASMR beginnings. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I like the ASMR villain. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But if you guys haven't noticed, and if you have looked at our subscriber count, it went down by one. So, guys, can we have a moment of silence for that one subscriber? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, like, I need someone to say something. No, yeah, we lost one subscriber. Let's rest in peace. Rest was, in peace, yeah. that one subscriber. I was saying to them, I guess they didn't like the uh, the Ohio comment. Yeah, I guess they they're a fan of Ohio. Too far. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're not the bot. <laughs> Ross, uh, Ross Novak, as you guys know, Ross Novak, the dean of students, he actually was like, I wasn't a big fan of that Ohio comment. So it might have been him. Sorry, Ross. He went to school in Ohio, so I yeah. guess he has some sort of loyalty to them. But I, I still stand strong. If you want to unsubscribe because I don't like Ohio, that's your fault. Um, <laughs> your loss. Just to be clear, I don't like Ohio either. Oh, yeah, so we're good. But here. this is a public <laughs> apology to no. He's Ross he's Novak. apologizing. I am not apologizing. <laughs> Ross, I'm coming for you, man. <laughs> wow. This is there, no, there's there's a new creators clash. Yes. Idubs and his creator clash. The boxing yeah, yeah. match. Yeah, yeah. Ross Novak. <laughs> 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 I challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> to a 1v1 duel. Yeah. Oh. You guys can decide what the one we Imagine we have a, like a future episode where it's a 1v1 duel between Jason and Ross. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I'm down for that. I'm so <laughs> Ross, down. are you down? Please let me know. Yeah, we got to bring him back and have him debate Ohio to me and Jason. We can have a debate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be good. But how are you guys doing? This is a brand new setup. How, how are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, Long doing good. Oh, yeah. This is weird. I'm like, we're looking over. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> boys don't be here, and then we have like, like that, you're, yeah. you're in my chair. Like, yeah, it's looking? it's comfy. I gotta say, out? comfy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, Cam's in my chair because, mm -hmm. like, when we originally designed the set, uh, it was only designed for like us and one other like person, and that would be our guest. And then we designed this for the boys only. And then today, I was like. Yo, what if we used both sets at the same time? <laughs> so you guys are seeing both sets at the same time. Revolutionary. Revolutionary. <laughs> one plus one now equals four. Cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> like one set plus one set equals four people. Yeah. Like, but what are we oh. talking about today? All right. So Cor you guys know why you're on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you you know what's going on, but we know oh, what's yeah, going yeah. on. You listen to the new Yachty album. Yeah. I've been actually listening to it all day. For real. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's interesting. I will say, a total one eighty from what he did in the past, mm -hmm. and like, it, like as Dan was saying, he listened to it, but he was like, I listened to Poland. I didn't like Poland. Yeah. So I'm not gonna <laughs> listen to his new album. No. That's not that, that's not verbatim what I said. Well, it's it's to it's, Poland. It's, 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 <laughs> Corey and I got that little harmonizing going on. <laughs> but took, took the walk, walk to, to Poland. Poland. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so different from his past projects. Uh, guys, you listen to it more than we have. So yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Corey, you it's, can go first. It's uh, it's a trip, man. It really is. Um, I'm a yeah. big. Like, there's definitely some heavy like Tame Impala influences, so I'm a big Tame Mom, Impala fan. I'm sorry, fan. I know you're calling me, but we're, <laughs> we're in the middle of a Wait, show. An right answer until we're talking. Wait, ask her if she listened to the album. Ask her if she listened to the album. Did you listen? I was like, Mom, I know you're calling, but like, <laughs> I'm doing a shoot right now. I'll call you back later. Yeah, she definitely didn't listen to the album. No, it's like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> I don't know if she's even subscribed to the Illus podcast. But that reminds me, subscribe to the number one student-run podcast in the universe, the Illus podcast. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like you said, it's a complete, like, 180 from his past mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I never really got into Yachty. Like, I liked a couple songs from Yachty, but... This album, like, one listen, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then after, like, two or three listens, I'm like, man, I really dig this stuff. Like, I really like it. I think it was, like, a, an acquired taste. Yeah, I listened definitely. To the first, I, did, yeah. I had no idea what I was getting into, by the way. I had <laughs> heard of, like, controversy around it. Like, it's loved and hated in a sense. Did any of you guys actually hear about, like, the rumor, though, that, like, when it was originally coming out, before it even got leaked? Because, like, if any of you didn't know, this album got leaked a month ago. I oh, I didn't but know. But it was oh. announced a while ago that Yachty's next album would be a rock album. No one really knew what it meant at the time. Oh, I did but, like, hear about that. Yeah, yeah, Four months ago. Because I, I only bring this up because I was talking to my one friend about it. Because he texted me. Uh, at like one o'clock in the morning, maybe it was in the morning. I don't remember exactly, but he texts me and he goes, yo, Yachty might've just dropped like the most out of pocket thing of 2023. <laughs> and I, and I immediately responded with, you didn't hear the leak like maybe three months ago that like the, it was going to be a rock album. So like, I knew a lot of people going into it, didn't really expect it 
to be like what it was. I wasn't even expecting it to be anything like it was. No, yeah. It yeah. was nuts. It was like <laughs> you play it and you're like, why do I feel like if I was on like a mushroom trip or like acid trip, this would like be like a thousand times better? Well, that's what he said. His listening party He's like, you better have like those shrooms inside of you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, no. like if you're like in the unconscious mind. Uh, with the use of certain psychedelics. Like, I feel like you would enjoy this a lot more. Oh, yeah. It was very yeah. trippy, the entire experience. Um, and the more I listened to it, the more I was, like, totally engrossed in what was happening. It yeah. was like, I was, like, falling into a trance listening to it. Black it was, Seminole at the beginning? That was yeah. a great opening track. Like, I agree with, like, a, what a lot of people are saying. And, like, what you just said, it's an acquired taste. Because, like, it definitely is. Because his vocals, at, like, for most of it, and I would say definitely during the beginning, then, like, the middle and the end, were just like really weird. Yeah, like like auto tune in there. Not even the auto tune. It's just like it just it was Yachty's voice. Like everyone knows like <laughs> what Yachty was before with like Minnesota and all the old 2016 bangers and like Coffin. Like when, when he, he was, dropped, when he was part of Dram Song Broccoli. Exactly. Like yeah, that was Yachty, but like what he did was just like completely different than what he like usually do. Like it was a complete 180. Like whoever said that. It think, popped off though. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sounded good. Yeah, it, it was kind of like when I was like when Donda was dropping, I was expecting Donda to be something else, but then it was what we got. <laughs> <laughs> Donda's a lot. <laughs> Don, Donda's it's a, lot. a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot all in one. Like w- when I was like, okay, the new album's about to drop. I didn't think it would be what it was. I- I'm just like, cause like, like I-, I was like, okay, it's gonna be a rap album. No, cause I didn't hear that it was gonna be a rock album at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm going into I'm like. Yo, what is this? Like, I'm going through the first couple of songs this morning. And I'm like, I I don't get it. But then you like re, uh, you gotta rewatch it, kind of like. Yeah, like stuff like that. Like I was saying, you need like a good like three, maybe four listens. Yeah. I mean, sometimes first listen, you're like, wow, this is really good for this me. Is, for me, I was like yeah. on the fence. I'm like, like what Cameron said. Like I I heard about that it was supposed to be a complete different direction he was going, but I didn't expect it to be like the production to be so good and so like atmospheric. I was like. Yeah. But I wouldn't say like I was like immediately in love, like the, by the first track. But like I feel like the curiosity, the first listen, yeah, just like made yeah. me keep going because I just wanted to see like what he was gonna mm-hmm. end up doing with it. Because you don't know what's coming next now. Because mm-hmm. like you're you're expecting a traditional like rapist album, but then you're like, yo, what? Is, like I as soon as I clicked on the first song, I'm like, what is this? Because normally I listen to everything on shuffle. I'm like, I took the shuffle off, and I'm like. I have to listen to this like one by one just in case there's a story being told or yeah, something. Yeah, good thing you did because like the last half, how it just like consistently keeps transitioning. Like yeah. the last half is probably like the best part. That's such like, an incredible just... element with albums is the transition yeah. the songs. Mm-hmm. It adds like such another dynamic. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, I didn't even realize the songs change the next song. It just yeah. smoothly flows right there's in. There's a lot of albums that do that with songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's been really like, element. I feel like, I mean, maybe just like, it, obviously you've seen in like other genres and music, but I feel like within the last like two to three years there's been a more focus on like songs that really transition and i mean obviously you saw this in like earlier stages of kendrick with like to pimp a butterfly and stuff like that but i feel like there's more artists that are really now trying to just instead of just creating a like an entire track list of just bangers like it's really just like the reason why the song is there there's like an actual purpose to it and it makes sense that it's there rather than like say, like, Stokely with Ski Master Sump God, which is, like, an actual really good album, but, like, no song really transitions, but it's all just bangers. You say you listen to albums on Shuffle? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 normally it's on my, that. like, second or third listen, where it's, like, if I'm, like, in the gym, like, I'll pull up an album that I like and I'll just listen to it on Shuffle because I want it to be unpredictable. Because, like, when you're in the gym, sometimes it's, like, when I, even when I go to my albums, like, that I've, like, or my playlist, like, I'll, I'll play and I'm like, oh, I know what the next song is, but no, I want, like, an element of surprise. Shuffling in playlists is fine. I don't know yeah. if you can go to an album and shuffle <laughs> it, I, I, I do it when I'm, like, I, I do it when I'm in the gym normally or, like, when I'm on, like, a long car drive and I've already listened to this album a couple of times. So, like, if I were to play, like, Graduation, I'd, like, put it on shuffle or if I were to play, like, I don't know, a, a lot of Kanye has been talked about for, from me, but, like, if I were to go to one of J. Cole's album. Um, I, w- I would just put it on shuffle. No wonder you're insane in the gym. Like, your brain is going insane. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's unpredictable. <laughs> like, I'm just, and I haven't taken pre-workout in a couple of days. I mean, I haven't gone in the gym in a couple of days. 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> he's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's like, I, he's like I, I itching kind of, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to uh, well, I'll, I'll bring this up later, but I kind of got like a quad injury from like running in oh, rugby, yeah. but like we'll talk oh. about that later on in the episode. Sports injuries. Sports, Sports injuries. Sports injuries is the worst. <laughs> okay, now where were we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got sidetracked. Yeah, we got, we, oh, as always, we get sidetracked. But um, <laughs> one thing I like now that we're talking about this album, what was your guys' like turning point? Like which song for you like really began like, the full transition from like at the beginning of it being like, eh, this is interesting, but like, okay, to like, okay, this is actually pretty good. I don't know the song name itself. It was like three or four. When I realized that it was like, I can look it, was, it up on Spotify. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dan, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, <laughs> I was thinking like for me, like off the top of my head, like failure. Once I think it was failure and then like, or pretty, whichever one came first. That for me, that like five track run in the middle there was like the best part of the album. Really? Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. came right before failure. Yeah, uh, yeah, right at pretty yeah. all the way till like, I don't even know, dude. Like the yeah. the back half of the album is like uh, so much better, but like if you really think about it, the only three songs that are like kind of yeah. eh are like the first three, like Black Seminole to yeah, yeah. Uh, Running Out of Time. Yeah, I think once I realized like what the album was, and again it's like managing your expectations. I was like, once I realized what was happening, I was like, oh, okay, now I can dive into yeah. this and really listen to it the right way, not expecting a rap album or even like an alternative rap album, this is just entirely different. Yeah, even <laughs> when you look at the album cover, you're like, what is that? It, oh, that, that yeah, that was... That was yeah, that, I think that was AI generated, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was that, that, yeah. That was like... There's been speculation on why he did it, but like... Isn't Yachty like really into like like AI crypto kind of stuff? Like, isn't he... I mean, I know sure. he's I know he's a part of FaZe Clan, but like that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> he's a part of FaZe Clan? Yeah, FaZe Boat. I think <laughs> I, maybe his contract's out. I don't know. I don't know. Like Yachty, Yachty should drop ago. an album with FaZe. That was the last time I saw anything about FaZe. <laughs> I'm, yo, FaZe used to be so big back in the days. So it's like, yeah. um, Jason, what track were you talking about? I don't know. It was like four or three or four or something. Three uh, is running out of time. Four is pretty. To be honest, I didn't. I wasn't looking at the names. I was just listening to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The naming right. scheme, it's interesting. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, let's talk about that for yeah. a second. Is there a story behind that? Do you know, Cam? Or not that I, I mean, honestly, like I've just yeah. like been listening to the album. Like I haven't really like dove too much in it. Like I was talking about, like he said with the AI generated album cover. Like I, I saw something I was on about Twitter. To say what the heck is up with this album cover? <laughs> yeah. So like the the rumor that I was seeing on uh, Twitter about the cover was it was something along the lines of the AI faces are supposed to be like corporate like uh, leaders of like music labels and stuff that were like mocking him or laughing him for even wanting to try and do an alternative or a rock album. That's the only one that I've seen. And like after looking at it, it's like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That can make sense. Yeah. So yeah. like, I don't know if it's like, actually been confirmed. Some of these songs belong on this radio station. Yeah. Uh, yeah actually, they, I, they definitely could. Fit. I yeah. actually wrote down a song request for him this for Zombified by Falling in Reverse. Okay. Okay. But the, yeah, this album is quite the listen. No, yeah, I like The Alchemist. Yeah, I even when it transitions, I didn't even realize it transitioned. I'm like, Dude, oh, some, I'm some like, of bro, these songs I didn't even. I'm just like, yo, this is a long song. And yeah, and they look, like, yeah, it's a different song. <laughs> yeah, that's what I when I listen to the Alchemist. I like when his verse comes in. I'm like, it was like 30 seconds into the Alchemist. I'm like, oh, it transitioned. I even, <laughs> I didn't even realize. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> this is why I keep my. This is why I look at the song names while the while an album is playing whenever I listen to it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, like, just going through the track list right now. Just, like, I'm trying to remember which one's, like, my favorite, but, like, I... 14 songs, so... Yeah, it's just, like, I really can't right now. Well, that was another thing I was going to add. Like, it, how long is the album? Like, it's like an hour It's long. an hour. Yeah. It didn't... To me, for me, it did not feel like 57 minutes. Like, it just kind of... For me, it went at, like, a, a good pace. Like, once it was over, I was, like, satisfied. I was, like, all right. I, I honestly I don't even remember what I was doing when I was like listening to the album. I felt like when I was listening to this album, I kind of just like literally just got lost like in a trip, like you guys were saying <laughs> yeah. earlier. Like I just felt like as soon as I turned it on, I just kind of like just shut up and just listened for the whole hour. It was a very it was a very fun experience. It's mesmerizing. Mm-hmm. I tried playing it for Hudson though, and she did not have the same opinion. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she knew what she was listening to. We were cleaning the uh, the, you the house yesterday. So. It is. It's it the is. voice. I can understand why yeah. people yeah. won't like it. It's, it's the like voice. I listened to JJ uh, Fish, uh, JJ Ice Fish. Oh I have no God. idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Bro, back, back, back. I think this was one of the most hated singers on YouTube. I remember back in like middle even, school. I forget who. I forget the song, but my friend had an iPad and was literally playing Ice JJ Fish. He's like, bro, he's like, you got to listen to this. He's like, it's dope. I'm like, I was in like middle school. I'm like. A lot of people. <laughs> Was it, yeah, was he the guy who was like, he made the one song, it was like, it's something about you, girl, or something? Yeah, yeah, that was the song, yeah. Okay, never mind, we're done, we're done. (laughs) Stop. 
Oh, we're gonna stop. Oh, that's a memory. I remember that. He, that's a memory you don't want to yeah, unlock. I, I, you just, I have like trauma. I haven't you thought about that in forever. About that song until you oh. just mentioned it. Yeah, I just remember my friend. I, he had like a mini like basketball hoop in his bedroom, and he was like on his iPad. I don't know what got him to look it up on YouTube. He's like, "Bro, you gotta listen to this." And that I'm like, song? "Yeah, <laughs> yep." I don't. That was in middle school. I don't know. It was like. I only know about him from watching a video called "Top Ten Worst YouTube Singers." Yeah, that song was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I can vividly hear it right now. In my have you seen the music video to it? No. Yeah. Oh, the music, the music video. video. Yeah, there's a music video. <laughs> yeah, there's it's so video. low budget. We're gonna, we, watch We're gonna, we can watch it during the break and then yeah. we'll, uh, it's we'll so low budget. Like, yeah. oh, Lord. oh my god. We can't we can't compare him and then Lil Yachty. No. <laughs> Do anyone in the studio who doesn't, who has never listened to Ice JJ Fish before, prepare your ears for it? Honestly, yeah. it's well, it's it's an acquired taste because he can sing normally, like even in can um, he? Yeah, he can. that's the only song I've heard from him. Like I haven't yeah, heard no. any other Ice JJ track. It sounds like two different artists. He's the only artist on there, so he's bad on purpose. Like you go when you want to me, all you want to do is that high part, and then he sings normally. He goes uh, something like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, pussy wide open. Na, 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 you na, lost na, me. Na, na. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I don't know. Like, I'll have to watch it during the break. Wait, Yo, wait, wait, can, we, can we also okay, talk about some more this. mediocre music? Anyone listen? Yo, no, no one damn, even that. damn. No, I heard <laughs> it. My heart hurt. It. <laughs> wait, <laughs> damn. Did, did any of you guys no, listen to the new Trippy Red album? No, I didn't. I heard good. like bits of it. Yeah, yeah I heard it is. It is. I listened to Swag Like Ohio Part Two. Because, like, I don't know if you know who Little B is. Yeah. I've listened I've to eight different albums this year. Lil Yachty and Trippy Red were not one of, were not. Don't do Trippies. Do, like, Yachty's. I mean, like, I watched, <laughs> I, I couldn't finish all of Trippy Red's albums. It's like yeah. 24 songs, oh, like, always. What? It seems like all of his albums are, like, 20 songs. It I just, like, uh, it's like, after A Love Letter song. to You 3, like, I can't listen to that dude anymore. Yeah. He just aggravates yeah. me. <laughs> I think he, like, peaked in, like, 2018 or something. Had, like, yeah. Life's a trip. Kind of a love letter yeah, to you. Three. Those were like the good days, and then exclamation point dropped, and everything went to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I think the sound just kind of gets old too. It's like oh, it's like grimy and weird. I listen to it. And I, I just like I, I just like it. Just I don't know. It doesn't feel good in my brain. I feel like <laughs> it's shower grimy. Afterwards. I got a question. I, don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I got a question for you guys. What do we think about Oliver Tree? Oh, no. oh. I'm not, I respect the character and I respect the hustle, but I, I can't stand not the them. music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really like his song "Hurt." Hurt. What's that? Just hurt. Hurt. H-U-R-T. It's just the go, like the go, like I mean I can't say I don't like goofy music, but like I think he just does goofy music bad. Yeah. Like I feel like like if you think of like someone like Young Gravy, like. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. makes really goofy, but like goofy music. But it's he, he, good. oh yeah, he, he got sued for that too. But really? I don't know. Wait, but really? he makes like the white yeah. people anthems. Like he, like <laughs> he's just such a goofy white. Like he's like the goofy white rapper that everyone loves. Yeah, <laughs> all the moms too, especially. Oh, especially yeah. the moms. Especially the moms. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this YouTuber I watched like um, Max Taylor lifts. Like he was like I think. His mom has like Young Gravy's contact or something, and <laughs> she was just texting him. And she, uh, in one of his vlogs, she didn't say Young Gravy. She said his like government name, and he goes, <laughs> "What? You're not even calling him Young Gravy anymore." Like, I don't know how he does it. He's just <laughs> <laughs> that's his crowd. That's his idea. He also has he also has like citizenship in two different countries. Really, As he should. Was he a Canadian? Or something? U.S. and Sweden. 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 Mm. Sweden Switzerland. Switzerland. Ooh. I would have never thought Switzerland. He has one parent. One of his parents is from America, his, and he has another parent from Switzerland. Young oh, gravy fat. Very hard to get citizenship <laughs> in Switzerland to begin with. Wow. Yo, did you guys hear that story about him where, like, some, like, kid reached out to him so he could take that, uh, like, his mom on a date? So he he <laughs> took that kid's mom on a date. I didn't hear about that. I believe they it. Smashed, like, but yeah, and like, the kid was so hyped. <laughs> he was hyped about that? Yeah, like, <laughs> he was hyped about <laughs> it. <laughs> That's what you think about. Oh. Yo, school next day. That's geez, that's man. With my mom. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's weird. Yo, gravy. Yo, gravy was filling her with his gravy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, um, this podcast. That's the is Soren doesn't want to hear that. This started as a PG podcast through the school. <laughs> what is this turning into now? Are we are we just canceling the podcast? This is it. We're done. This is it, guys. Yeah, this is it. The podcast last one for the rest. We're we're selling we're selling the podcast, guys. We're selling the podcast. We're sell we're selling the podcast. Selling out five dollars twenty nine cents and 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 a and a fish or your best offer. 
Oh, we're selling it, but we're also, as Eric said, we're selling out, guys. Illis is officially selling out. Oh, are we like, selling out? How are we selling out? What are we selling out to? <laughs> we're, just, we're just going for, like, just shock humor now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah. like, see, that's what happens in, like, a boys-only episode where it's just, there's no structure to it. Like, <laughs> what are you guys going to talk about? Music? Little All right, let's well, go. Well, that's the beauty of it. You can't judge beauty, man. I wasn't the, even given a script. Haters can't judge beauty. Cameron didn't even know what we're talking about going into it. <laughs> I didn't even know I was supposed to Cameron, be here. Cameron got here from, like, his duties on campus, and then he just goes, what are we talking about? We'll let you know on the podcast. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> nice. We talk about other things, though, too. Nah, we're good. Go birds. <laughs> Go birds. <laughs> Go birds. <laughs> Yo, yo, AFC Championship, NFC Championship. I love Go yo, Birds. I was watching. Go Birds. I watched that Bengals game. Uh, There's so many. Uh, what about it? I heard sports. I was that last the last call at the end, man. I was like, uh. oh, the Eagles game was so bad. The Eagles game. What was the call? The when Mahomes was running out of bounds, they called a late oh, hit. Yeah. Oh yeah, but he was two I, feet did, out. Did you see yeah, the game. He was like crying. The Who? Him out? Oh, the Dude, they had the camera on him for at least five minutes <laughs> of him like, on the bench crying. Like I felt so bad. And what's his name? Like celebrating, and then it goes to cuss to the guy. He's, he's oh, probably like Tra- he's probably with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, yeah, Kelsey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I feel bad for him because like he like he kind of holds responsibility yeah. for the loss in, in that sense. And he's like putting everything on himself. Bro, his teammate was talking shit about him too. He's like, "Why'd you touch the quarterback at yeah, the end?" The he, was, he was literally like, "I'm like, bro, I feel this guy's gonna dig like a 12 foot yeah. hole yeah, when he when he gets back home." Like, he's, so he's quitting. Like, right yeah, after. Mm-hmm. I feel like if your team loses, you shouldn't go like, "Yo, what what was that? What were you doing?" Like, you should be yeah. like, "All right, let's try to do better." It's tough. It's tough, especially when it's that's money the and championship. Job. Yeah, yeah, money, yeah. money yeah. on the line. Some money and like it, I don't think it was much as teammates. I think he was just putting that on himself. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it was like right afterwards, and he was like sitting in the van. I felt yeah. bad, but it was it was kind of funny. Like, <laughs> as, as, as like bad as it is, like Hudson and I were watching, we we're like laughing. We we're like, why won't they cut away from this guy? <laughs> <laughs> like he's trying to like be secluded, <laughs> and they're like, get it tied up. <laughs> Focus. I mean, because like as like media majors, we know that that is going to get the views. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like. like Tears like we oh, learned yeah. in uh, Hiller's class. Well, they do it with the Cowboys, with the Cowboy fans. When they're bawling their eyes out, <laughs> oh. they, they, they'll be on them, like, focused in for, like, it feels like 20 minutes. Like, they're just, yeah, yeah. they won't cut away. At, at some point, it's like, maybe I should cut the camera, but it's just like, as my duty, I know this is going to get yeah. the views. But you know what? As a cameraman, I feel like the cameramen secretly, like, enjoy that. Like, they're just laughing behind the camera. They might, yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, this is a question we got to ask Hiller. Oh Cause, yeah, because you know what he told us. He goes, "Emotions, man. They make the best. They, they make the best view. They do. Content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The episode that I put on my YouTube channel today has a lot of anger near the back half of it. <laughs> oh, check, check out Dan's stuff, episode. Yeah. Missed on YouTube. It's the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Shell Cup episode. Oh, so the Eagles, they yeah. won. Go birds. They, they destroyed. I'm not even an Eagles fan, but it's 49ers. just fun, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what are the Chiefs? They they won, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah 23 dude, my cousin 20. goes. My cousin, he's like what, like 11, 12. He goes crazy for them. Mm-hmm. My yeah. um, I have an uncle who's an Eagles fan, and my family and me That's and my mom always hope that the Eagles lose because yeah. we don't want to have to listen to him all, like. <laughs> Talk about how good the Eagles are. The, you know, the, the Eagles. You don't want to see an Eagles fan lose, though. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Same goes for the Cowboys and the Giants. Yeah, but no one uh, likes the Cowboys or the Giants. Yes. I have an uncle who's a fan of the Cowboys. Yeah, and I have, a, I have an uncle bad. that's a fan of the Giants. So. <laughs> my dad's a Giants fan, bro. <laughs> Sorry about that <laughs> game. <laughs> Disgusting. It's weird. Like my dad's a Giants fan, my stepmom is a Bills fan, and somehow my little brother is an Eagles fan. Like, I don't know. Like, he's like work? he's like nine years old. I didn't yeah. know he had like thought. I had <laughs> opinions on things. You're like, <laughs> dude. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to football, families were either, it was either stick together with one team or split apart. My family's more of the split apart type. Yeah. Yo, but like kids, like nowadays, it's just so different. Like at nine, they're thinking about like chemistry. At nine, I was thinking about like how do I become the next Red Ranger? Like. What? Yeah. Like the Red Power what? Ranger. Like, <laughs> like, like the thought process of kids nowadays, it's so different from like when we were younger. Yeah, like, what does that have anything to do with the birds? I don't know. He brought no, up my little brother's brother. an Eagles fan. Oh, okay. Kind of <laughs> he <laughs> brought up. <laughs> <sorry, laughs> I was really like, yeah, <laughs> Rubain's like, yeah, actually, like, children these days? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I, I, no, but I'm being honest though. Like, like uh, middle schoolers nowadays are thinking, thinking like how I used to think of like my senior year of high school. I'm just like, Yo, what's happening to you guys? Why are you guys growing up so fast? Yeah, my little brother is probably more mature than I am. I have, I have a, like a <laughs> thirteen year head start. Like, bro, like I had Lego <laughs> stories going on with my Legos. Like, this was like a story that I came up with like when I was like a young kid, and they were still going on in high school. International Lego Day was actually January twenty eighth. 
Oh man. Well, oh, ha- happy, happy too late. Yeah. Well, it's it's happy belated and it's Lego Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Twenty eighth because that was the day because that was the day that they first got patented. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I said that wrong, but I don't that's care. fine. We got. We understand. Pat- I don't even. I don't have to Pat- Google anything Pat- with Dan here, man. He is. Yeah. He is my and, Jamie. Oh, well, <laughs> oh yeah. Twenty five forty. All right, so we'll be back. Actually, Corey, you haven't done it yet. Which camera? Is it uh, that one? That one. This one. How about you both do it at the same time? Cam already did it. Cam already got it. Let's give it to Corey. All right. Run it. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, guys. We're just taking this moment to talk about TVM, Marywood student-run news station. They broadcast every Friday while school is in session. The reporters create stories for all ages and their interests such as local news, sports, and campus events. They also have timely pop culture segments, one being a commentary on the 2022 Oscars. They also have reoccurring segments titled Mental Health Matters. Here, students and faculty get together to talk about the importance of mental health. Check them out on YouTube at TV Marywood. Are we back? We're back. Yeah, yeah, we're back. Yeah. Why are your mic upside down? Welcome back. Well, well, what's up, guys? How's it going? We're back. It's good to be back. Yeah. Oh man, my arm is feeling a bit injured right now. <laughs> it's hurting a little bit. Talking about <laughs> injuries. <laughs> Sports injuries, and ha- like we've all had them at some point. Where, where, whether it be like, I don't know, just like going out with the boys, playing some basketball, jamming a finger, or just like. Breaking your foot on while running. That's a I don't know. big jump. Jamming, <laughs> jam your finger to breaking your foot. That's. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so like, the reason it comes up is because my quad is actually really hurting. It's because we did our quarter mile test on like Thursday. I know it seems like I'm a weakling, but like it was a six a.m. practice, and I decided that right before practice I should have an energy energy drink to wake me up. So I drank a 300 milligram energy drink. Which I later on realized was not a good idea because energy d- drink is going to get your heart pumping fast. That plus us actually working out and running a lot. I almost like fainted. But like we were doing our quarter mile test and I felt like I was going to faint. I was like, no, I just got to push and finish this. Like I got to get under two minutes somehow for this. I ran. I got it. But then in, while running that, I pulled like a thing in my like quad somewhere like up here it still hurts and it's been like four days yeah caffeine's not the best thing to drink when you're an athlete yeah i i, I gotta like cut down on like drinking caffeine right before practice because that was not a good idea yeah man and, and the injuries again like you're a rugby player so you need your legs man. yeah that's like half legs that game yeah well, that and it's like i'm also like lifting in the gym so it's like i haven't been able to go to the gym at all like, I go there and I bike that tick because that stretches it out and it makes me feel better for a bit and keeps my endurance, like, kind of up because I'm still doing some sort of cardio. But it's just, like, I, I wanted to go squat today, but, like, even doing this is making my leg hurt. Jeez. So it's just, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to squat, but then I'll practice tomorrow. So what are you going to do for practice? I mean, so I, I fought through the pain on Saturday. Um, and I scored on six people, which I feel amazing. But it was like our – uh, so coach decided to make two teams out of everyone, right? So he made six players that have been playing for at least like a semester or a year and a team of five players that are brand new and one guy that they make fun of because he kicked uh, the ball out of the try zone. The try is the score. Like when you score something, it's called a try. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to put the ball down with both hands. That's the proper way to do it, and the ball is not supposed to roll. What he did was he put it down with one hand and he kicked it off. <laughs> so it didn't get out. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, I, I haven't seen it. I've heard the story from everyone on the team. So it's like he was on our team. So I'm just like, oh, this is great. Like, this is going to end up being amazing. And then he threw the ball to me. I wasn't expecting I was like, damn, this is going to hurt a lot. And I just, like, booked it <laughs> just to the other side of the field. And I'm like, nope, nope, I'm not looking back. I'm just, I'm just booked it. I got down, I scored, and I'm like, wow, that hurts a lot. <laughs> but the adrenaline, like, keeps you moving. No, it, like it, it was literally the adrenaline. When you have I, I can't adrenaline say that pumping word. through your body like that, you yeah. don't feel pain. No, it was just, like, for those, like, I don't know what it was, like, 10 seconds, maybe 15, maybe less. It was just, like, I felt no pain. It was just, like, get to the other side and score. And then I did it again. Uh, we, I, sc- I scored again. And then the third time I was about to – so we lost the ball. The enemy team had the ball. Enemy? 
enemy team. The enemy team. The opposition. <laughs> yeah, <it's weird>. yeah. <laughs> the opposition had the ball. I went after the girl that had the ball, but then like I felt this like weird like pain, like stinging pain. I just stood still, and everyone was. And then one of my teammates was like, "Rubain, what are you doing?" I'm just like, "I'm in so much pain right now that I just want to stand still." I was like, "Yo, coach, I'm gonna go go to, off the field, and I'm gonna go stretch." You're just like, "All right, whatever, go." But because like coaches get annoyed because they're like stretch and all that stuff. But the thing is, is also like my body's not used to this much cardio all at once. It's because mm-hmm. it's two hours of consistent cardio. I'm used to of weightlifting and powerlifting, where it's like you're doing a little bit for a bit, and then you rest, then you do it, and you rest. You have like a one minute break between each lift, um, or like at least thirty seconds. This was like so taxing on my body, it just hurt. But I am glad I scored on six people. Yeah. It doesn't really count. <laughs> it was a real game. <laughs> Did the athletic trainer speak? I did. He just told me to do nothing. Bike. He was like, let it heal. He was like, just bike. He was like, don't massage gun it. Because I was massage gunning it for like three nights in a row. And he was like, don't do that. He was like, because you're stressing the muscle out more. So just like, let it like rest. He was like, that's all you can do. Like, just don't use it. Interesting. And he was like, don't run on it. Just bike. So I'm like, I don't know. Hopefully this is good by tomorrow. Or like, what am I going to do for practice? Yeah. I don't know. Man. That's, that's all you really right. can do though with those sort of muscle in- injuries. Yeah. Like, it's basically, like, all they can tell you is just, like, you got to just rest it and then, like, do as much movement as you can without, like, as much pain as possible. Just let your body do what it needs to do. Like, it's getting better and better every day, but at the same time, it's just it's just annoying. Because, like, today was supposed to be, like, that I was going to go squat because I don't have practice today. When I don't have practice, like, going heavy on my squats, so, like, I was going to go, like, in the 300s, like, do a couple of reps and then just continue on with leg day. But, like, now it's just, like, oh, I can't even do that unless, like, this pain, like, legit goes away by the time we're done with our second class. I always got grilled on my squat (laughs) position whenever I was on the swim team. Like, your squat, yo, your squat, they have to be ass to grass. That's what what I say. (laughs) Like, the ass has to be, the grass has to be touching your ass. Like, it needs to be low. If your squat's not low, I don't count it. Like, because some guys, could I demonstrate it? Like, Uh I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I could just do it right here in the middle. (laughs) Like, because some guys go like, oh, here's a squat, and they go, that's not a squat. Be, make sure no one screenshots this part of the episode, okay? <laughs> that, if you want to screenshot, like, weird, I don't know, like, gym positions, go to my YouTube channel. Or if you're going to do it, just just, just tag Rubain. Make yeah, sure just to tag give him credit, Rubain. you know what I mean? Let me get a little bit of the likes. <laughs> so, like, some guys legit go here and up. Like, you, you, guys, you, you guys have seen those guys that just go like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, other guys, like, I would count this. Like, if you... When here, I would count that, but I like going even lower. I go like all the way down, and then I go up. You guys do that or no? I don't squat, meeting. so I don't know. <laughs> Cam, I know you like. Yeah, I go to the gym. You're an athlete. Yeah, but I'm tall, so like, <laughs> like my my squat is like a little bit below my 45. Like I don't need to go. I don't need to go any further. I'm already moving like three-fourths my body, like, yeah. my body height, just to even get down that, there, like, I'm chilling. See, that's what I feel, because I, the guy that's trained me, Damien, my friend, like, he's much shorter than I am. He's, like, five, maybe ten, five, yeah, maybe five-ten-ish. I'm, like, what, six, one, six, two, like, I'm, go, I'm, like, when we stand next to each other, you can tell there's a big height difference, and it's, like, he squats all the way down, he's, like, why can't you do that? I'm, like, I am much taller, so like me traveling is I am technically traveling a lot more than you to like do something like squats or even deadlift, mm-hmm. even bench because my arms are longer. Yeah, so it all like, just depends on how like your joints fit into like everything. Like yeah, like one thing I've noticed is for bench, what a lot of like taller guys or guys with longer arms they go really wide. Have you guys noticed that in like professional lifting? No, I haven't noticed that. Like some like really taller guys attention. go really <laughs> wide to like bench just so it's like they're not traveling more. I don't know why. I want to know. Well, any well, like in shorter and like man on the swim team last year. Yeah, in like powerlifting competitions, like that's why people like have these crazy back arches. But like it's as much like the shorter you can like control your rom, your range of motion, like the easier the lift's gonna be. Like you, you're still gonna be benching like hella weight. Oh yeah. But like the like if you only have to move the bar like two inches just to like hit your chest, like that's a clean bench technically. Yeah, they actually removed the rule. You can't have a big arch anymore. Really? I, so I, like mean, I don't those... really pay attention to that. I've seen a couple videos like that. Yeah, this was like very recent where they like removed the rule. Where it's like cause some people would have like a big, big arch. It was like it was like big, like noticeable. Now it's just like you could have an arch, but not like a big one. It doesn't count if it's like a huge arch. Because some people would be like up here, the bar would go from here to here, and be, that'd be a bench. I'm just like that's so unfair. Because. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
a lot of that is genetics, I feel like, because I can't arch like that. I've, like, practiced. I just can't. And yeah, like, tons of practice, too. Like, they probably work on the flexibility. Yeah. Like, throughout yeah. their entire lifting career, so they can... They're, they're, yeah, they have their good arch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what's, what's your biggest injury that you've gotten from sports? I'm trying to think of, like, between two. So, when I was a, a sophomore in high school, I sprained my ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was tough. I was playing baseball, so, like, you... You need to run a ton in baseball. Yeah, uh, I was sliding into second. That, uh, so, so here's the whole full story. Is I, I got called up to the varsity team, mm-hmm. and they had me pinch run at a game, and uh, I was stealing second. And I was out by like ten feet. Like I was way out, and I didn't know how to slide because I was like, well, I knew how to slide, but I was like, I'm so far out. Like I don't know what to do in this situation. <laughs> so I just did like the wackiest slide and like slid, like on my foot, <laughs> and it just like. Totally came out. Oh, it was one of those, like, it kind of got caught up in the dirt? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, much, yeah. yeah. Oh. I was just like, I, <laughs> I could have, like, turned around and gone back. I just slid it. I was like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> man. Um, the guy went D1. That, that threw me. The catcher that threw me went D1. So oh, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too. I'm not too. <laughs> Give me two, man. Like, <laughs> I got injured, but, like, it was, like, from a D1 athlete. Yeah, so he like, was good. Um, so I, like, hobbled off the field, and it was tough. My other one was also awesome in baseball. Um, you can still kind of see it today. I'll show you in a second. Um, I was fielding a ball, and the ball, like, bounced up like an inch higher than I thought I was going to and just directly hit my finger oh. like straight on. Oh, man. I was bleeding. If you look close enough, you can see that my one finger is still bigger than my other finger. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can see from that far away. But this oh, finger is oh. like still bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah a little it, it's bit. It's like marginal, but like when you're closer, you can see it. But I'm not flipping this <laughs> up, I swear. <laughs> It's still, it's been three years, I think, and it's still bigger than... I think we would, wow. I think that if we were monetized, this video would get demonetized. Oh, maybe, just yeah. Because of that. Yeah. But it's... I mean, it's, it's you, you <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just a term of endearment. That's all it is. That's all <laughs> <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> Not the major. But it's, it's, it's wild. It hurts so bad, man. Mm-hmm. And that, like, kind of ended my baseball career at that point. Because I was in, um, it was like Lackawanna, so it was like college yeah. baseball. And I was excited just to be on the team because, like, they have one of the best teams. Mm-hmm. And at that point, it was, like, after COVID, so I kind of, like, I gained weight and I wasn't as athletic. But to be on the team was just an honor because they were so good. Um, I was, like, third, second baseman. I was never going to play. <laughs> but um, at that point, I was, like, you know, I can't even hold the ball anymore. I can't throw it. I can't hold the bat. Like, is there even a point in recovering from this injury and even trying to go on? So I just opted to start working instead and – haven't played sports since, so it's oh. it's sad in that aspect. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I miss it all the time. We were talking about sports a little bit with like Cam, mm-hmm. I think, and like I miss it so much. I I I tried coaching baseball for a year, and it just wasn't the same because like some people are born coaches, some people are born players, and like yeah. my whole life I was a player. I couldn't I couldn't coach and be outside the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sad. But yeah. <laughs> it, it just went down. The <laughs> episode started here. It's like, oh well, yeah, I miss it. Uh, that's the old podcast though. We got all the ranges. Yeah. <laughs> I actually talked about middle finger injuries. This one's actually crooked. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. I know my pinky is bent up. I don't think anyone's ever seen it before. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is my natural resting position for my pinky. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I can straighten it out if I wanted to. But this is how I don't believe it. Oh. oh, that's weird. I was born like this still, so it's no injury. It's just, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but new things. It's just a skill issue. <laughs> Sometimes I go to put my hand in my pocket, and like, the pinky catches on my pocket. Skill issue. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Nothing. Just go on. Just go on. I, I said it's a skill issue. <laughs> he just died. <laughs> that was funny. No, uh, my roommate's been saying it a lot, so I'm like picking it up. Whenever something's always, like, nice, <laughs> like, oh, that's just a skill issue. <laughs> Thanks for being. All right, moving on. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> no, I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I can. I have two sports injuries that I experienced. I can talk about if you want. Uh, tell yeah, us, Dan. Welcome. Yeah, you wanna? Who are we giving? Dan, the man. We're oh, paying. Okay. Happy to leave. I'll see you guys in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I Dan, have the man. two sports injuries that I can think of. They were both in swimming, and it was before Cam was on the swim team. Oh no. So Cam didn't experience me like that. So the first one was my sophomore year, and this was just dumb on my part. So we were going to um, someone's house to work on posters for senior night, and it was negative degree weather, and I didn't wear any gloves. So I got frostbite on both of my hands, and on the way there I also slipped 
got <laughs> and Jeez, man. and my knee started bleeding as well <laughs> from that. This is the blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so, these posters for real. <laughs> so because of that, I ended up getting frostbite on both of my fingers, and some and sometimes after practice, after swim practice, there was like dead skin like hang off my fingers wow, after the practice. The description, man. Ew. I can yeah. picture And so it. sometimes Jeez. I had to go to the trainers after practice just to get the dead skin trimmed off. Oh, the disgusting. poor trainer. And I would also like to point out that <laughs> I would also like to point out that that was right after we had come back from Florida, so I already had a sunburn prior to getting frostbite. That was a rough one. Wow. So I actually had sunburn and frostbite at the same time. That's a, that's a was it a was it a wind? I was assuming it's windy. So you probably had windburn as well. I <laughs> to add to that. I honestly don't remember. It was five years ago. W- were you guys like working on the posters outside? No, it was, it was it was inside. I had to walk there because I was oh. dorming at the time, and they lived off campus. Oh, so you walked to their house from campus? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, but the Jeez. but the thing is, like one of those off campus residency things. So it was like wasn't too far. Yeah, it's not wasn't too far, but it was still oh. enough to give me frostbite. Jeez, that is not good. <laughs> and then the second one I can think of was actually during my junior year of swimming. So a year after that incident. And we were in the gym because we were doing dry land at that time. This one was not me being an idiot, but just an actual s- sports injury. I was doing dumbbell step ups, which is where you step on on this dual thing with dumbbells in both your hands. Well, for some reason, my right foot, when it was on the stool and my other foot was in the air, my foot suddenly twists like this, and I fall back on my back because my other foot was in the air, and I ended up twisting, it ended up being a twisted ankle, and I ended up missing a few practices because of that, because my foot had just swollen up from from that whole thing and that was by far the most painful thing I've ever experienced and I have experienced kidney stones before I know what pain oh jeez the the ankle was the worst yeah oh yeah just like hearing these injuries like (laughs) yeah that's that's rough (laughs) I've experienced a lot of pain kidney stones twisted ankle frostbite like I know what pain feels like there's probably way more painful stuff in the world but but I don't want to experience that because if I experience can experience those three things i don't want to experience what more painful stuff can be no more pain in life the most pain i ever had was an injury from uh frisbee 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 oh. like ultimate frisbee or you're just throwing a frisbee normally <laughs> what'd you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'm wondering um should i come back on for this yeah yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. thanks dan. Yeah, thank you, dan thank you dan thank you dan thank you thanks dan all right um, so my Frisbee injury, as I said, um, we're playing Frisbee, you know, with, with the church, having a nice time. I decided to spin in a circle so I could throw it farther out. Like discus style. Yeah, but no, I was like spinning. I spun <laughs> twice. My foot went in a hole. Oh, oh it's one of those. I was still spent. Oh. 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 ACL, oh, one, gone. Two. <laughs> uh, uh, and then I broke my ankle. Oh, oh Wow. No wow, at church. Oh. Yeah. At church. At a church picnic. Oh, church picnic. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That was wild. I don't want to think about that. No. <laughs> I was like... But when I'm a dead. bone breaks, it, it... Bone pain is the most painful thing to experience in the human body. It's like deep down in there. Did it make a sound? Yeah. Well, I still think the I worst... I don't remember. Okay, just kind of like... <laughs> I just remember it was like so much pain that I was just like... I was like, okay, I I can't hold back tears. I gotta cry oh, like okay. tight. <laughs> oh. This was this was what like twenty thirteen ish. Okay, so it was a while ago. You were oh, like wow. ten years old or something. I I was give or take. I don't, yeah, like so I was like eleven ish, twelve. Wow. Well, this is just proof I'm the oldest person in the room because I was fourteen at the time, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think when I did, I was like yeah, eleven or twelve, oh, and then so that cool. happened. I'm just like. Wow. Like, to this day, like, I don't, like, naturally resting, my foot isn't straight sideways. Oh. So, like, when I'm standing, I'm, like, this foot is always, like, sideways. Interesting. And, like, when I squat, I have to find out a weird squatting position for my left leg. Because my friend, he squats, like, very close like this. 
I can't do that. It's like I'm not able to bend that way. So it's like it's always like this. Hmm. I, I'm I'm going a little wider with my left foot if you guys can't see. That sounds very <laughs> painful though. <laughs> That's no, I was. I was in a cast for a while. I didn't run for years after that. Jeez. I was like a super Jeez. athletic kid. But then like after that I didn't I didn't do any I didn't want to do anything athletic for years. You know, the, the trauma of going through that? Like, you yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was until, like, I think, yeah, college after that. That was, like, my last years in middle school, almost into high school. And then I didn't do anything athletic, didn't want to do anything super athletic till like, college. Other than, like, the volleyball club and badminton, I didn't really do much in high school. Well, fair enough. I mean, after such a... Yeah, I was just like <laughs> yeah. in a cast for like months. I destroyed our couch because we had a leather couch, mm-hmm. and I would just rest on there and watch TV. And it just the cast just destroyed it. We had to get a new couch <laughs> after that. <laughs> okay, well, I enough with I don't want you guys sitting here without yeah. talking. So, what injuries do you kind of have? Sorry, no, not to discount. <laughs> That's tough. he doesn't care about my injury. I don't care about you at all. Man. <laughs> all right, oh, damn. Um, <laughs> Con- condolences for Ruben, guys. <laughs> Wait, we have to do the. Oh. Like that painting? The creation of man. Some, yeah. 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 E.T. <laughs> E.T. <laughs> E.T. <laughs> okay, you said you had a back injury, right? Yeah. So, uh, let's see. This whole fiasco probably started last November. Actually, no. This is 20. That would have been 2021. Yeah. Right. Can I do the years? I don't know. It feels like every, like, you know when January gets here, just like yeah. the whole time feels just weird. I don't oh, know. So weird, yeah. Anyway, it's um, November of 2021. Uh, was like our mid-season meet at a, our swim meet was Diamond City. So like halfway through my oh, two, huh? That was this was this like my your first year of swimming? Yeah, yeah. In college? Yeah, it was my first year of swimming in college. So um, we were at this uh, meet Diamond City, and I was swimming. I had like two events already, and like a relay, and I had to swim the two hundred free. Uh, I sp- began swimming my two hundred free, and then like all of a sudden, like. In between, like in my spine, right in between my lats, on my right side, just like it, it felt like it was cramping up, but like it didn't feel like a cramp. But like I could barely move my right arm. Like I was just like kind of like flailing it, just trying to finish this race. Uh, so yeah, that really hurt. So I went over to the, their trainers that were there, and they're like, uh, "Well, can you move?" And I was just like, "I don't know. I think I, I honestly, I think it might have just cramped up, but like it just hurts way worse." And they're like, "All right, you're just gonna have to like suck it up for now." And I was just like, "Okay, whatever." Um, anyway, I kind of swimming stops a little bit, obviously, cause we go into winter break and that was our mid season meet. So like we go into winter break, uh, I'm chilling. I'm like trying to like, my back's still pretty hurt, but like, I was just like trying to get through it. Like I was still hanging out with my friends, like lifting a little bit, just like trying to do like really minor stuff just to keep yeah. my back moving. Uh, eventually new, uh, the day before new year's comes along and I'm hanging out with all my friends. We're all in a car. We have to, we're, we're driving my friend back to school because he, he goes to school near Philly and he had to be back for basketball practice. He gets back to, he gets back to school. He texts, he calls us 15 minutes later, positive with COVID. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're is, right. that, is that why you weren't like there in the first few weeks? Of mm-hmm. swimming yeah. Came back? Yeah. So like, obviously like my friend texts us, he's has COVID day before new year's Eve. Uh, so we're all like, crap. Um, well, Let's go. We're driving back to our houses. We're like, we all call our parents. We're like, let's go get COVID tested. So we all just like drive. We all sit in my friend's car and we all go to this one place to get COVID tested. We get our results back the next day, New Year's. We all have COVID on New Year's Eve. And so like, I then could not do anything active. But then we still started to, we, we all chose to keep hanging out though. Because we all had COVID together, we all tested positive. Yeah, we had a we had a New, Year, we had a New Year's Eve party and everything with like the six of us. And we we're all we all talked to our parents and like, yeah, as like as long as you guys are all okay with it, like there was no one else in the house. Yeah. It's not gonna change anything. But anyway, I mean, yeah, because it was you six were together when you tested positive. Yeah, we all tested positive Quarantine together. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, just to try and get to the end of this point. I get sick with COVID. It wasn't like terrible or anything, but it like completely took me out of like doing anything like athletic or anything like that. I wasn't like terribly sick. It felt like just like having a cold, but like I was just quarantined, so I couldn't do anything. So just sitting there for another two weeks added onto it from already resting for like two weeks, just trying to heal my back. It just goes like down the hill. Like I'm not doing much. Like I was just sitting around. So like my posture was getting bad, just all like minor things continuing to affect it. And so like eventually I'm trying to muscle through this. 
And then in uh, January, we get back to school. And our meet, our end of the season meet was until like February, right, Dan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was till February. So like beginning of January, I get back to school. I start suffering from insomnia episodes. Oh, man. So like, Jeez, you know, your bro. body needs rest when you're injured, right? Yeah, yeah. I was sleeping like four hours a week. A oh, week? Wow. Like, wow. yeah, I would sleep for like 30 minutes a night. And like, there would be times oh, like I would just show up to practice like 6 a.m. My coach would look at me. He was like, you're all right. And I was just be like, no, I just didn't sleep. Like I would, dude, it was so bad. I was, I remember one night. Like we had a meet and I was, I took like two melatonin just to try and fall asleep. I ended up taking eight that night and I only got an hour of sleep. It was so bad. Jeez. Like I, like there was, I, we could not think of like any re like I went to the doctor. They're like, we don't know what's wrong. Eventually it just kind of like fixed itself. But then I'm going into conference and I like, I, I had no preparation. Like I had minimal preparation. Like my back's still killing me. Um, we had the shaving party though. Yeah. We did all that fun stuff. Shaving party yeah, sounds yeah. For sweat for conferences, we sh- we shaved up a lot of our body. Yeah, Swim- swimmers oh. swimmers oh. when they when they go <laughs> when you go into a big meet, swimmers you shave your whole body like leg hair, arm hair, all oh. that stuff. And I've done that. that. Us, we're just in the one room shaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I've I've done <laughs> that. Me and five I, guys. I <laughs> shave <laughs> by myself. No, I would do it. But yeah, anyway, I get to the conference meet, not really well, too well prepared, body like in desperate need of sleep. Yeah. And just like everything else on top of it. But I get through the entire meet. I keep working. Like I, I and like by the end of the meet, man, I'm dead. Like I did <laughs> I remember the last the last the r- last swim that I had to do was another two hundred free and I sprinted. We ended up getting third in that race. Wow. In the in the relay. But uh yeah. I remember like touching the wall and I was the last to go and like I could not feel my back. I remember just crying on the deck. I, I literally just like threw my arms up and I had Jason Lee and my friend Dylan grab my arms and just yank me out of the pool. I literally laid on the like the wet pool deck for like 20 minutes. Like I just did not want to move. It was so bad. Me and then like, yeah. wow. I've been getting it, I've been getting it fixed. <laughs> when, they, when, when they were doing that relay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So like as it goes, like I'm still like struggling with it. I'm finally like getting back in the gym and feeling comfortable lifting like somewhat heavy again. So it's been like a year. Of here. yeah, but like it was just like I, I couldn't really find the right thing to do, and eventually I started going to a chiropractor this summer, and that really helped me like a lot because like they noticed like my spine, like I don't have scoliosis or anything, but like where they could see like in my muscle, like in the middle of my spine, it was like being pulled slightly to the right, and it was because the muscles in the right side were just like overstrained compared to the ones in the left, so they're like tugging a little harder, so it was a muscle imbalance issue. So like they were adjusting my spine a little bit just to straighten it off to get rid of some of the inflation. Yeah. And then it was also, they were just telling me, you know, just do stretches, like go like do minor lifting stuff, but it's like, you got to just strengthen it now. So that's all I've been doing. Slow recovery, okay. but I'm getting there. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Back issues. Those are, those are real. Mm-hmm. No, real yeah. yeah. I messed up my, lo- I, I feel like I've done everything. <laughs> I messed up my lower back and shoulder while deadlifting in April. Really? I just, I, I PR'd at 365 and then I went, you know what? Let me do it for one more. Cause I didn't record it. And the second time I went up, I like like pulled on my left oh. side, oh. so my oh. shoulder hurt oh. so much that like even now I have to do warm ups, so it's like good. Um, but my lower back it was just done for months. Yeah, mm-hmm. that I kind of I didn't touch the deadlift bar for like a while after yeah. that. Um, does Corey have any sports injuries? Well, well, I was gonna well I was gonna say that actually leads into mine because when I was I used to do CrossFit when I was like sixteen, which was probably the worst mistake oh, ever problems. hold on one sec we only have two minutes though so we have to cut to a second break before we get into oh the story. oh yeah second break <laughs> hey guys we're just taking this moment to talk about the woodward Merrywood's on-campus publication the woodward is a student-run publication that produces a newsletter once a week their stories range from anywhere from national news to college sports and everything in between. They have a presence on several social media platforms including instagram and facebook they've also gone paperless to save trees. So you'll have to visit them online at thewoodward.org. We're back. We're back. Hey, Corey. Hey. So we were just talking about uh, lower back injuries. Oh, like I was prefacing a little bit. I was, I used to do CrossFit when I was like 16, which like I was saying was a sin, sin, <laughs> that big mistake. And um, I messed up my lower back. I was doing, what was I doing? I was doing a front squat into like a split jerk. And when I went up, well, I got, I went into the squat. Everything was fine. And when I went up to get into the split jerk, I just felt a pop all in my lower back. And for the next like three or four days, it was just killing me. And then it like went away. But 
last spring, it was like, I just woke up one morning and that same area was like stiff and just painful. And I tried like lifting and it was only aggravating it. So then I went to physical therapy and the guy said that for, that, so that was, yeah, it was like four or five years then when I injured that he said it healed stiff and I let it go and heal stiff for like that whole stretch of time. So oh. every time that I was lifting and stuff, it was just aggravating it and it was not like loosening up or anything. So I did, I went to physical therapy from the end of last um, spring semester to like this past October. And now I'm just starting to slowly get back into, you know, lifting a little bit heavier. And my, I mean, knock on wood, my back is like much, much better now. Like yeah. here and there, it might, I get a little pinch or like a flare up, but yeah, it sucked. It's weird it's too, like, but like once you have that like first big flare up, you can really tell when like something, like even just like the tiniest detail is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere in your body. Yeah. I knew I was screwed. I'm like, oh, and I was 16 too. Like that, at that age, you should, <laughs> should not be feeling no, that should, like yeah. in your back. That was like, so, but yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah, once you have a big injury, I feel like little thing, you're like, I'm feeling like the sharpest pain in my leg or something. Like I, cause I've, I've twisted my ankle way too, like both legs way too many times ever since I broke my left one. And it's just like, even the, sh like the sh smallest like pain that I have in my calf or something, I'm just like, oh, there's a pain right there. I need to fix that like right now. Yeah. Well, what sucks about the lower back is like, it'll never go away. Like it's always going to wake up here. Yeah. Some days stiff, some days a little sore, but it's just managing it. And always, like you said, like stretching and like, yeah, when that's all you can really back, do. Stuff like that can be permanent. Yeah. Well, how my physical therapist described it is like if my back was like the muscles in my back are like too like, you know, like the like overalls kind of. He said when I went into the split jerk, it was like the part of the overalls like snapped. Yeah. Ah, so the whole it was like middle of my back down was like messed up. Oh, yeah, it was like. Boy. That sucked. That <laughs> I hated it. Yeah, I mean, it was hey, like the moral of the story is don't do CrossFit. That's, yes. what, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking. Especially, yeah, especially as a, a teenager. Just a be a teenager. Do stupid things. Do don't stupid do CrossFit. Things, yeah. Don't do CrossFit. <laughs> See, that, that's what I like about bodybuilding because bodybuilding, you stay very light in weights. You just do a lot of reps. And once you get stronger, you go a little up in weights. Powerlifting is where it gets a little bit more dangerous because powerlifting is a lot more like deadlift, squat, and bench press. Uh, and I had, like it's it's said like deadlift is the most dangerous thing you could do because you can mess up your back really bad like it like I'm so glad my shoulder and my back healed even though like my shoulder's kind of like messy but like I'm so glad that my back healed because like I almost like completely destroyed my back with how I did it because my back was rounding so much like that 365 was not good at all I mean I do a lot more weight than I, that now much better but it's just like with like powerlifting, it's so dangerous. But like same thing with CrossFit, there's so many explosive yeah. movements mm -hmm. that it could get dangerous. And sometimes they're just like, oh no, just put the weight up. Oh like, yeah. It really depends who's who you're around. Some yeah. people are like, hey, keep it light and all that. Mm -hmm. But other people are like, no, push yourself. Yeah, I, I got I that a lot. I like pushing yeah. myself, but it's just like even when like I'm deadlifting, if the bar is just like two inches up and I know I could get up, but I'm like, if I get it up, I'm gonna injure myself. I drop the bar. Oh yeah, I'm not smart. Yeah. Do that. Like, well, I'll finish with this. Like that back when it was bothering me like around the spring, like my posture was getting bad because oh, yeah. really that was four or five years of me. I was more like rounded over, like my shoulders were straight, but it was more of like my whole front was kind of arching down. And that was just four or five years of my back not being able to stand up because every time I'd stay straight, like yeah. up, it would just apply pressure to it. That's something, but, that's something I've really been trying to work on is my posture. Yeah. Like, I feel like every time I'm trying to walk around, like, or at least sitting, I want to try and, like, squeeze my back a little bit just to make sure, like, my shoulders aren't, like, going forward because yeah. I know, like, how it's affected me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes, like, I'll do it while walking. I'll just do, like, this and yeah. just, like, pump my chest out a little. Yeah, sometimes I might look like a, like a douchebag doing it. <laughs> but, like, at the same time, I'm doing it, I'm doing it so my posture's not messed up so I don't mess up my back with how much I weight I consistently put on yeah. my back. We need your back for everything, like... Yeah, no, yeah. every back's messed up. You can't walk correctly. Yep. Like, yeah, you you can't move your arm. Like, my lats really messed up right now. Like, it's super yeah. sore mm -hmm. for the past couple of days. I'm just like, I can't yeah. do much with it. Like, you need to let your back yeah. rest. So, like, guys, let your body rest. Let it heal. That's 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 what we're trying to tell you. And don't push <laughs> it. push yourself, but not like don't over push yourself. Resp don't response. Overdo it. You know your don't limits. overdo it. Limits. Know your limits. Yeah, but. That, that, that was an interesting episode. That's, like, first one of its kind, season two. As I said, we're taking it farther beyond, like, one step at a time. 
We, we've got this is the longest episode, I think. It's mm-hmm. got to be up there with the New Year's episode. Oh, with the New Year's, they're, they're yeah. close. A lot of good stuff, though. The New Year's a lot of good stuff. In the season two opener. Yeah, this yeah. might be longer because we have two breaks. Two breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, I mean, obviously we deserve a subscribe. I, I mean, long, yeah, long. like we lost a subscriber again. F- subscriber number fifty nine. We're sorry. Um, <laughs> Check enjoy numbers. your life. If you want to be subscriber fifty nine. Part two. Part two. Go for it. The second. <laughs> Please help us. Yeah. Please subscribe. <laughs> help us grow. Guys, go to 100 subscribers. Let's do it. Let's get to 100 subscribers by the end of this month. Uh, but as always, thank you for coming. It's only two more days until the end of the month. No, this goes out in February. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> help us get to 100 subscribers by the end of the month. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in. We are the Illus Podcast. Thank you for you guys yeah, for coming on. Because this was like a last moment thing. And it's honestly been super fun. Yeah, been Might good. do it again. We'll do it again. Number, All right. one, number one podcast in the universe. In the universe, guys. As said by NATO. Right. As, as said, said by, by NATO. NATO. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Dina Students, Ross Novak. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next one. We don't Peace. like Ohio.